All right, we're in the uh, southwest end of the church right here in this corner, and uh, we have completely removed uh, at this state all of the memorial church floor from 1907. And we've also removed the concrete curbs that were along each side of the floor on the south and on the north that once held the black iron fence that allowed visitors to peek down and see the foundations for both the 1640s church and the 1617 church that predated that one. A um, couple of uh, interesting features have shown up as we've uh, cleaned across all of the uh, floor that uh, originally was exposed in 1901-1902 during the excavations by the early preservationist. The uh, feature that I'm standing in right now is uh, described in the records of the APVA uh, as being a uh, six foot by six foot compartment uh, with a very frail foundation and um, we've been working around what looks to be a couple of bricks in line, um, maybe a row of two or so bricks with a lot of burning, likely related to Bacon's Rebellion because that is the only fire event that we have on record that took place uh, in the church area here. So um, that'll be interesting to see as we go forward what this compartment may have been part of. Uh, the APVA records list finding a spade nosing and a grubbing hoe that they attributed to the sexton uh, for the church. And uh, because they were found immediately where I'm standing in kind of the center of that compartment, they thought that this was a sexton's closet, a place for storing the tools for the sexton who took care of the church and churchyard um, and would have been in charge of burying people. So those tools likely uh, were what he used for some of the burials here. Another feature that we have looked into is uh, the trench that was dug in 1897 by Mary Jeffrey Galt, the uh, founder of the APVA, who wrote that she dug this trench with her own hands uh, around the 1640s brick foundation for the south wall of that church and uncovered and exposed cobbles and clay uh, that she attributed to the church that Deputy Governor Argyll had built in 1617. And that's a major part of our focus here is investigating that church's foundations and searching for the original floor plan for that church underneath the 1640s and 1680s church. Uh, a couple of other features that we found are various areas of brick dust that is related likely to the 1640s church and is covered with a thin section or lens of clay that may have been a barrier between the 1640s church after Bacon's Rebellion in 1676 and the latest floor that went in in the 1680s and was used until sometime in the 1750s. Um, those have all been very exciting finds. We've got intact tiles also in some places that um, may be related to either marking burials along the aisle of the church from the 1640s or may have framed the center aisle uh, brickwork. The um, area that I'm uh, standing in was dug in uh, 1901 in June of that year and they uh, dug down till they reached the native topsoil but um, it looks like when they went to fill in their test, they took some of the portions of wall, perhaps from this corner, that in some cases still have plaster um, attached to them from the interior wall of, of one of the churches. And um, looks like it could be 1640s, could be 1680s, and you know, reused from the 1640s church. Uh, there may be multiple coats of plaster that we'll be able to see as we start examining these, but all of this rubble seems to be just pieces that were tossed back in to backfill once they had completed their test in the southwest corner.